Okay, so um, So last week, like second week, what Sir Tortis first one is BCS theory. Like uh, first week also, he started the theory like uh, part and uh, then he explained the BCS theory. Then after that, Ginsburg Landu theory. Then from there, he taught um, remaining parts. Okay, so we will just briefly go through each section. Listen, SARS uh, class carefully. The from the BC second week first lecture, it is related. It is uh, he explained on BCS theory. So there he explained many body ground state also. So in the many body ground, ground state, there where he explained the Hamiltonian part. Uh, Hamiltonian will be mainly kinetic energy terms and potential energy terms. Okay. Mm, so then after that the average number of particles and bcs many body hamiltonian in there okay here we say many body hamiltonian what are the things he taught okay by number here is one he taught about the kinetic energy and potential energy terms after that convert the problem from 2 to 1 variable right and after that he explained the BCS gap equation also okay these are the th three things he explained in the B BCS many body Hamiltonian part then after that it went to um, uh, like for an attractive potential that will be V of K L is equal to minus V0 and then from there he explained the expression for energy gap that is delta value okay then goes to the finite temperature mean field okay it's mean field okay mean field approximation so in the mean field approximation the expression for critical temperature also he explained okay and when he we go to the second section second session he explained about the order parameter okay what is uh, what is that order parameter for example in the magnetism case if we say the magnetization is the order parameter similarly here the order, order parameter is the wave function okay wave function of the super electron The order parameter is a function of the super electron and then from there he, ex uh, he explained free energy. So free energy uh, the term will be like Fs is equal to Fn plus alpha times psi square plus beta by 2 psi to the power 4. Okay. Where beta is the constant and and alpha is the temperature dependent parameter. Okay. So this all he explained in the second lecture in the last week. I mean second week classes. Then after that he explained the. Hmm. Now then in the case of free energy also free energy he explained absence of the external magnetic field and presence of the external magnetic field okay from there he uh, derived the first and second ginsburg landau theory equations okay 
So this all you can uh, get it from the first lecture. And next is coherence length and penetration length. So, so coherence length and penetration length depth are the uh, most important uh, for the like length scale parameter which is available for the superconductors. Okay, so you can see the penetration coherence length and penetration times like psi is equal to alpha by beta whole power 1 over 2 and tan h x divided by root 2 theta. So here that is the coherent length here and similarly the penetration length lambda l which is proportional to 1 minus t divided by tc whole power 1 over 2. So these are the important terms which he taught, taught in the second lecture. Okay. Now, if you go to the third lecture on the second week, okay, so here we can see that this for the third lecture. So, he taught about the London equations. First London equation that is derived from the Newton law and second one is from the Maxwell's equation. So, for first London equation, we can write it as m star dv by dt is equal to e star e. Okay, so which is there is one more relative term also that is current density. So it will be js that you can write it as ns e star vs. Okay, so this is from these two things. We can write the first lambda equation that will be mu lambda l to the power l dj s divided by dt is equal to e. Okay. So lambda l will be what? So lambda l will be lambda l is equal to root of m star divided by mu 0 ns e star where m star will be the effective mass. And E star nothing but E is 2 electrons. Like upper parent there will be 2 electrons. Okay. And NS will be the number density of the superconductive state. Okay. So that is the first line equation we can see. And second equation will be JS is equal to minus 1 over mu 0 lambda l square a star a vector okay so here this also these two are very important equations in superconductivity okay now in the physical significance uh, if you want to say the physical significance of superconductivity equation then you can go to the symbol superconductor symbol superconductor multiple conductor can you please move it So, uh, that's also I explained in the class. So, simple conductor, superconductor means the material which, which have all over the place, it will be the superconductor and multiple conductor, superconductor means here it will be not 
and it's not just superconductivity in itself, but other places it will be superconductive. Okay, so these are the uh, physical application, physical significance of the Lagrange equation. So from the uh, now uh, similarly monotonic and superconductive, then he went to the quantum model of superconductivity. There he explained like first as psi is equal to psi e to the power i theta and derived the equations. Okay. Uh, then there will be expressing superconductivity density and the condensation so such kind of and the momentum which came as p is equal to m star v e to the power k a vector okay so like that so these are the main important uh, things which he told start taught in the third class so here you have to remember mainly about the lambda l parent lambda l value and similarly the first and second and third equation these three are very important in this Okay, so from that, if we go to the last session video, uh, so we explained the determination of uh, TC for weakly coupled superconductor. Okay, uh, so here uh, he explained that EK value, so it will be root of T squared plus delta squared T. Okay, delta square t and then there will be the temperature dependence of the energy gap delta. So that also is written as like KBTC is equal to 2 delta of 0 divided by 3.52. It's a numerical value which is calculated. Okay, mm. and then from the discontinuity of specific heat for thermodynamics, then it's calculated the Gibbs energy. From the Gibbs energy, we can calculate the entropy from the, the specific heat. Okay. So the specificity delta C we can it will be T DHC DT whole square. So from the curve which we plotted, which we can plot like HC divided HC TC. So in that curve we will get like this. So from the curve slope will be the value. Slope will give this DHC the DD value. Okay. And after that. Delta C value which is given by the slope and uh, slope value and after the corresponding of expression for the PCS theory also we explain in an order phase parameter also. So, so that situation and if you plot the C and T value like C and T value the curve will go from like this and one small dip will be there then again it will go like this ok. So, so small dip will come at the transition. temperature. So, these are the things like start over in the last week. I just went through briefly with in this.
now we will go to the problems what we left from the last week okay then we will continue the remaining problems also so here the question is two isotope of lead of mass 206 and 210 have critical temperatures of 7.193 kelvin and 7.125 kelvin respectively find the isotopic constant so this similar kind of problem we uh, solved in the last class it's a numerical problem okay so we will uh, first write the what are the parameter which is given already here That M one is given two zero six and T C one which is given seven point one nine three. Okay, now we know that here M two is given two one zero and T C one and T C two is given seven point one two five. Okay, okay. Now isotopic constant we have to calculate that the value is alpha. So the formula will be what T C M R to the power alpha. Is equal to like we can write it T C one M one al to the power alpha T equal to T C two M two power alpha. Okay, so this we can uh, like from this only we have to calculate the value of alpha. So T C one and M one and M two and T C two which are given already, you have to just substitute take the ratio of those two and just substitute the values. Then you can understand it. Okay, you can get the value of this is T C one divided by T C two is equal to M two divided by M one whole power alpha. Substitute all the values here and find the alpha value.
So what we have to do here? It will be Tc1 divided by Tc2 that is equal to M2 divided by N1 whole power alpha. So substitute the values of Tc1 and Tc2. So it will be 7.193 divided by 7.125 that is equal to M1 divided by M2. So you can write it as M210 divided by 206 whole power alpha. Okay, so now this value will be 1.00956 that is equal to 1.01941 whole power alpha. So to get the alpha value, we have to take log on both sides. So it will be log of 1.00954 is equal to alpha times log of 1.01941. So from there, you have to get the value for the alpha, which will be 4.1259. Please go through it and we will go for the next problem. So after that, we will go to the next problem. The problem is find the critical field, critical current and critical current density for superconducting wire of lead. Having a diameter of 1.5 mm at 5.3 Kelvin. The value of critical temperature of lead is 7.8 Kelvin and the critical magnetic field is 6.5 times 10 to the power ampere per meter at 0 Kelvin. So, you have to calculate the critical field, critical current and critical current density. So, first we will write the parameter which is given in the question. So, it will be Tc which is given 7.8 Kelvin and Hc of 0 that is given 6.5 times 10 to the power 4 ampere per meter. Okay, then T value which is given 5.3 Kelvin and D is equal to 1.5 millimeter that is equal to 1.5 times 10 to the power minus 3 meter. Then radius which will be 0 0.75 millimeter that you can write as 0 0.75 times 10 to the power minus 3 meter. So, these are the parameter which is given. You have to calculate JC. 
IC and HC values. So please try to find it. Those these similar kind of problem we solved in the last class also. You have to use HC formula. Similarly, KC formula that is 2 pi R HC. And from there you have to calculate the like I see, then from there you have to calculate the JC values.
So uh, here HC value you can get it 3 points. So what we have to do? We have to give the uh, substitute all the values HC for where will be HC of 0 times 1 minus T y by T by T C whole square. Okay. So in this substitute the values here first. So it will be 6.5 times 10 to the power 4 times 1 minus uh, 5.3 divided by 7.8 whole square. So that we if you do the um, calculation and then you will get the value 3.498 times 10 to the power 4 and therefore meter. Okay. So here that you can write this 34.9 kilo ampere per meter also. So from this value you have to calculate the IC value. So IC will be 2 times 3.14 times R. R value will be 0. Uh, which is given already diameter. So from the radius 0. 0.75 times 10 to the power minus 3 times 34.98 times 10 to the power 3. Okay. So from there you will get the value of IC that will be 164.75 ampere. Okay, so from that how to find the JC value? JC value will be IC divided by A. That you can write it IC divided by pi R square. Substitute all the values. IC we got from the calculation of the 164.175 ampere. So substitute the divided by 3.14 times 0 0.75 times 10 to the minus 3 whole square. Okay. So this will be the JC. So from there you have to um, find the answer. So the answer will be 
9.8 times 10 to the power 6 ampere per meter square. So, plus substitute all these values and calculate, you will get this answer. And JC, you can calculate one more method also, it will be 2 HC divided by R. So, this is also one more method to calculate the JC value. Here also you substitute this and try the, are you getting the same answer like when we are doing IC by AC. So if you substitute JC as a 2 HC divided by R, you have to give the 2 times uh, 34.9 times 10 to the power 4 divided by 0 0.75 times 10 to the power minus 3. So you will get the same answer like 93.28 times 10 to the power minus 6 ampere per meter square. So see in this question you have to calculate critical field, critical current and critical um, current density. So in that case you, you know the formula you can easily calculate all these values. So critical um, Field you can calculate Hc is equal to Hc of 0 times 1 minus T divided by Tc all square. Okay, so from that you can calculate the Ic value. It will be 2 pi R Hc. Okay, mm, so from that Ic value you can calculate Jc of the current density is critical current density. But critical current density you can calculate from the critical um, current and critical field values also Ic divided by similarly to Hc divided by R. These two method also. You can use here and you will substitute all the numbers like values whatever they given in the question and you will get the answer for it.
So now we will go to the next sec next problem. So the critical. Will be the critical current density is seven one point seven one times ten to the power eight ampere per meter square, and it is required to change the superconductor wire of um, char um, superconductor wire of radius zero point five millimeter to uh, at four point two Kelvin, and if the critical temperature is seven point one eight, then calculate the value of maximum critical field. Okay, so similar kind of problem we did the last class also. Here first we have to find the critical current density uh, formula. You have can use from the you can calculate the HC value. From the HC value you can um, find the remaining HC zero value. Calculate the maximum critical temperature. Also.
So here the parameter which is given j value which is given 1.71 times uh, to the power 8 and r is equal to 0 0.5 millimeter so and temperature t is equal to 40.2 kelvin then tc is equal to 1 tc value which is given 7.18 kelvin so from these values you have to calculate the jc value so jc you can write it as 2hc divided by R. Okay, so substitute the values uh, it's to an HC value and sim so HC value we have to calculate here. So HC will be 2JC R JC divided by 2. So substitute JC value, R value, and dividing multiply and divide by 2 you will get the hc value here
So like this here what we saw. So TC value also given. So JC you can calculate 2HC divided by R. So HC is equal to from there you can get the HC value. HC you can R, R times JC divided by 2. Okay. So substitute those values 1.71 times 10 to the power 5 times 10, 10 power 3 times 0 0.5 times 10 to the power minus 3 divided by 2. So from there you will get the HC value. Now from the HC you can write the formula for HC that is equal to HC of, HC of 0 times 1 minus T by TC whole square. Okay. So from there you have to get the H0 value. We have to find the H0 value. So H0, HC0 is equal to HC divided by 1 minus T divided by TC whole square. Substitute the value carefully. So you can write, get the values like 42.75 times. 10 to the power 3 divided by 1 minus 4.2 divided by 17.18 whole square. That it will become 42.75 times 10 to the power 3 divided by 0 0.6575. Then final answer you will get the HC value. It will be 64.97 kilo ampere per meter.
So now we will go to the next problem. Next problem is a Josephson junction has a voltage of 9 microvolt across its terminal. Calculate the frequency of radiation generated by it. Okay. So um, here the formula will be frequency it will be 2 EV by F. It's a direct formula. Okay. So voltage value only we have to sub substitute. Substitute the voltage value. So it will be 2 times uh, 1.6 times 10 to the power minus 19 times 9 times 10 to the power minus 6 divided by H value. H value will be 6.626 into 10 to the power minus 34. Then finally you will get the answer for this. So it is very easy. So every case you have to just remember uh, like all the formulas. That's it. From the formula itself we can calculate get the, all the answers for that and theory part whatever I told from the class that will be useful for you. Even after even questions also most of the questions are the solution is derived from the SARS class derivation or whatever it is. So that uh, so you can get from every assignment solution from if you listen this uh, lectures very carefully.
So this problem you can get it from frequency is equal to E V divided by H and e, V will be the potential here. So substitute those values. In potential of voltage here, substitute the values 2 times 1.6 times 10 to the power minus 19 times 9 times 10 to the power minus 16 divided by 6.626 times 10 to the power minus 34. You'll get the answer 4.34 times 10 to the power 9 hertz. This problem, like similar problem, but we solved earlier. So the the question is the critical temperature of a metal with isotopic mass one ninety nine point five is. 4.185 Kelvin. Calculate the isotopic mass if the critical temperature falls to 4.113 Kelvin. Okay. So the same formula we have you have to use Tz m to the power alpha is equal to constant. So from there you have to calculate the uh, mass of the uh, isotope where the temperature falls to 4.133 Kelvin.
how to solve this here that m1 value which is given 199.5 and gc1 value which is given 4.185 kelvin similarly m2 value which is given and tc2 value that is 4.133 kelvin okay so we know the formula tc1 m1 to the power alpha is equal to tc2 m2 to the power alpha okay now what you, you can write it as mm, tc1 m1 power alpha is equal to tc2 m2 tc2 m2 power alpha from there m2 power alpha is equal to tc1 divided by tc2 uh, m1 power alpha okay so then here alpha is 0.5 so root m2 that will be tc1 divided by tc2 times root m1 okay mm, so from there you have substituted the values here so 4.185 divided by 4.133 times root 199.5 then from there here you will get the root m2 value will be 14.38 and their m2 will be 
increase the penetration depth of the mercury at 3.5 Kelvin is about 475 nanometer. Estimate the penetration depth at 0 Kelvin, the TC for HEG is So here you please try to solve the penetration depth uh, of mercury at 3.5 Kelvin is about to 75 nanometer. I estimate the penetration depth at 0 Kelvin. Okay, you can use the formula lambda L of 0 K is equal to lambda L of Tk 1 minus T divided by Tc whole to the power 4, 1, 4 power 1 over 2. So this formula, it's already is our discussed in the class. You can use that same formula here also. So here you can use the formula lambda L of 0 k is equal to lambda L of T k times 1 minus T divided by T c. The values which is given here lambda L of 3.5 is equal to 75 millimeter and T c is equal to 4.12 k and T is equal to 3.5 Kelvin. Okay. Then substitute all these values in the for formula. Then you will get the answer for it.
to substitute all these values you will get the answer like 75 times 1 minus 3.5 divided by 4.12 whole power 4 divided by 1 over 2. So it will be 75 times 1 minus 0 0.520 times 1 over 2. That will be 75 times 0 0.692. It will be half is equal to constant from the tc1 m1 power alpha is equal uh, half is equal to tc2 m2 power half okay from this tc2 is equal to m2 power half divided by m1 power half TC2, so it will be M1 power half divided by M2 power half than TC1. Okay, now then substitute all the values here, you will get the answer for it.
if you go to the next problem this estimate estimate the magnetic field strength necessary to destroy superconductivity in a sample of lead at 4.2 kelvin the critical magnetic field at 0 kelvin is 0.80 tesla and the uh, transition temperature is 7.2 kelvin how we can solve this so here you have to use the formula hc is equal to h0 times 1 minus t divided by tc substitute all the values so h0 will be 0 0.80 t will be 4.2 tc will be 7.2 Substitute all the values here, we will get the final answer. If you go to the next problem, 
calculate the critical current which can flow through a long thin superconducting wire of aluminum of diameter 10 to the power minus 3 meter and the critical magnetic field of aluminum is 7.9 times 10 to the power 3 ampere per meter okay so here it is a direct formula that you can use ic is equal to 2 pi r h c so substitute to the value 2 times 3.14 times r will be 10 to the power minus 3 divided by 2 times 7.9 times 10 to the power 3 so here you will get the answer 24.806 ampere Today's session, we uh, just discussed about the old the uh, theory part, which started in the class briefly. And after that, we solved the problem. So today, also we continued the last class problems like penetration depth, isotopic masses, and uh, just an effect, and critical field, critical current, and critical current density, etc. So you have to remember some formula to solve all these numerical problems. So. Um, Most of the problems are very easy, just you have to uh, like what you say, include the um, like first you have to write the what are the parameters given, what are the parameters which is available, then which you have to include those values uh, in the problem and get the answers. Okay, so you have to be very careful with what are the values are given, it's a critical value or normal value uh, for every case of like field and current and current density and temperature also. The two problems were remaining that uh, we will solve in the next class and we will continue for these kind of problems in the next class also. So we will wind up today's section here, okay? So see you in the next class. Okay, thank you.